And welcome back to Strophisch, Katja Strophik, where we're currently obsessed with taxi games. <laughs> um, third stream of Night Call, and maybe we'll even finish case one tonight. Hello everyone who's already here, hi zombie flesh cult, don't worry, you're not the serial killer, you got here on time, so... You're not a suspect. And also, hi them in your face! Glad you could make it on time tonight. Ah, the delicious sound of water. You would not believe how humid it is here. I am sad. I'm very, very sad. I'm barely keeping it together for you guys. Um, also, hi, Havring Headwear. Everybody say hi to my sister. And Barack Obama's back as well. Look at our starting lineup. Very nice. Bam in your face. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to catch up on the story of the game. Could somebody fill me in real quick? Yeah, if somebody could give a little catch up beyond the fact that we are a uh, cab driver in Paris. Um, it's around Christmas time and we have some sort of a shady past. And because of that, a uh, um, police officer, not literally, but figuratively, held a gun to her head and was like, I'm gonna have you arrested again if you don't help me figure out a serial killer case. So that's what we're working on right now. Extortion. Extortion leading to detective work. While also still driving a cab. So far, so far we've been mildly successful. Uh, none of us still kind of don't get the, the system of collecting clues. Not really though. Um, so we'll see if, if that figures itself out tonight. It's all orange? What's all orange? Oh. Is my stream frozen? Am I seeing that right? Slept till noon yesterday. Well, that's good. I hope. I look good? Well, I'm glad I look good, but do I look... Do Am I moving? <laughs> is the more interesting question. Because I'm moving in my streaming software, of course. But my stream is frozen for me. Hey there, Sportler! Welcome back! Okay, so I guess then I'm just reloading my stream manager. Give me a second here. It's fine, you're moving. Okay, well then I guess... Twitch just isn't it displaying for me tonight. Okay, well I'll just see you in Streamlabs. Fine, okay. You will let me know if anything's up. That's my window, everybody. Um, I'm afraid we'll have to deal with that tonight. Because I will die of a heat stroke if I don't leave the window open. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> Hopefully the game will uh, be louder. So, you get up quickly. Night five, is it, I think? And a few minutes later, you're outside of your studio. Ooh, rainbow hair. It fits the game, true. Fair enough. <coughs> also, hi, Shalag, welcome back to you as well. Glad you're here. Adds to the ambiance, yeah. <laughs> It feels like we're right in Paris. Okay, so I don't think any of these people are interesting to us yet. <laughs> he looks very content with his life. Danke, Gesundheit. It's humid as fuck here. It's not that hot, it's just humid. Like, really. I'm melting. Uh, which is worse than heat. Anyway, let's pick up a pretty lady. And if the photo is any indication for how this uh, game has been painting characters, she gonna be a bitch. But we could be wrong. I can only probably catch a few minutes before I need to head off though. Okay. You'll have to get caught up on the VOD then, I guess. You slow down a bit. You've just been hit by a migraine. Okay. 
we now know that uh, that's a thing that our character has. Poor him. You crack your window. I see Parisian air fills the cab. You need to rest. You need coffee. You need to close your eyes. Just a minute. One tiny minute. You don't need to sleep. Ah! Ah! I look scary in the back seat. Jesus. You raise your head and see yourself sitting in the back seat. Your gut clenches. No. It's more like someone is pulling your guts out. It's so loud, isn't it? I love living on a street. I really do. I'm gonna try and close it. <sighs> the things I do for you guys. Anyway. Yeah, I look like shit, I know. No surprise, considering all the crap I eat, right? He smirks, or, or maybe it's just a smile. You can't quite tell. Honestly, I didn't even realize it wasn't in the game. <laughs> that really is quite the advantage. <laughs> I've just got one thing to say. It won't take too long. You'll be able to get back to defending the weak and the poor right after. And maybe cleaning up your reputation. I'm a pretty face of yours. Why am I such an asshole when I'm just a... A mirage? Or haven't I been playing myself assholely enough? Because we haven't been that asshole this far. Or I guess maybe it's just the mean voice in our head. Anyway. And maybe cleaning up your reputation in that pretty face of yours. Every once in a while, I picture us on the night Dad died. You remember? Your mouth is burning, like you have hot cold on your tongue. I remember. All that hate you had built up inside. It was incredible. The shape in the back oh, the shape in the back seat appears to settle in. Plus, all that hate, it was aimed at me. You threw it all in my hands. I wanted you dead. I wanted to poke your eyes out. You see his teeth flash in the rear, rear view mirror. But you only had eyes for mom and everybody else. You could tell they weren't doing well. But they didn't get it. Stop. He chuckles. Hey, after I passed? No, not at all. No notification, huh? No, we just started. Uh, we were going for... Something like five minutes. Uh, so we just got a migraine and now we're hallucinating ourselves in the back seat and we look scary as hell. That's all you missed. Also, my street's really loud. Yeah, right. Like, I'm going to stop. You feel a shooting pain in your arm. Every time neighbors, friends, came to the door to offer their condolences, they said they were sorry that he was too young. You wanted to scream at them. Tell them they didn't understand anything. But you kept your mouth shut, didn't you? He is almost whispering now. You were always the weaker of us two. He remained silent for a moment. You see, our brother, he was the devil incarnate, but he always practiced what he preached. That is, okay, can I go off on a tangent really quickly here? This line of like, well, yeah, he really sucks, but at least he does what he says he will do. At least he's honest. At least he's open. Like, if you're a dick and you're open about it, that doesn't make it better. I'm sorry, but like, that's not a redeeming factor. All anybody ever does by saying, well, but at least he, at least he says what he thinks, is adding way too much of a positive light to somebody um, that doesn't deserve it. <laughs> That's usually the only time that comes into play. Um, 
a certain former president comes to mind. You see your brother, he was the blah blah. If you were him, you'd already have stopped the killer with your balls alone. <laughs> Is he you? Is he the... Yeah, I think he's the taxi driver. But the way he's talking sounds like he's our twin, right? But I think this is a Gollum situation. Uh, I think I get what this line is supposed to mean, but how it's written is uh, quite amusing. I'm now picturing somebody like jumping into a killer's face, balls first, like, you're not getting away from me! <laughs> but no, I'm really ruining this moment, I'm sorry. <laughs> but no, you prefer to make a deal with the police, with every bastard in the city of Paris. A silence, chilling. You're gonna lie alone, man. Because I'm telling you right now, I'm not gonna hang around. Um, good. That wasn't really, that didn't really add anything to my evening. A shadow moves in front of the cab. By the time you realize it was just a car, you're alone in the cab. You close your eyes, hoping your migraine will subside. You feel exhausted. You sit for a few minutes and start driving again. The purr of the motor is strangely warm and comforting. So no pretty lady for me, huh? That was railroading, damn. Is there just, are there just some people I'm not supposed to pick up? Uh, sometimes I really don't quite get it. So he's been showing up for at least the night before. So, Let's just go with him. <laughs> DJ Watson, oh yeah, with the man bun. Porte de Versailles, all right, that's where he wants to go. The door opens and your passenger collapses into the back seat. His eyes are hidden behind a pair of large, dark glasses. His clothes reek of sweat and booze. A clubber. He mumbles his destination and you start driving. A few words are exchanged. The weather, taxes, traffic. Then, you could tell it's coming. The inevitable conversation about the killer. These lines have been present in a few of the conversations we've had, yet we haven't really talked about the killer with anybody but the people actually involved. So those, uh, that, those hints of like, oh, we can basically talk to anybody who's in Paris right now about this case hasn't really been true thus far. So let's see if this conversation actually is going to be about the killer or if he's just going to tell us about, you know, driving to the airport and picking up women too. Some bits of information, rumors, things overheard. You make a mental note of what you've heard. Who knows? It might come in handy. Oh no, excuse me, it does add some clues. I do think it's a shame though I don't actually get to have those conversations. Because I feel like it would add to the game to actually have an impact on how much information I get from people, depending on, you know, whether I focus on being a good taxi driver and being cordial and all that, or focus on getting clues. This way, I just get clues presented to me. Uh, and then I get to have a n narratively interesting but not really relevant conversation. I don't know. Your mind wanders. Your eyes vaguely scan the store windows. The sodium light coming off the street lamps feels like it's dripping into your brain. You're falling asleep. You need a bit of music to keep you awake. Let's be polite. You glance at your passenger. You mind if I put a little music on? He waves his hand as if to say, who cares? 
You turn the radio on, pressing on the dial to find a station you like. 80s rock ballad, too soft. Behind you, your passenger is snoring. Barely, but you can hear him. Gregorian chant, mind-numbing. Some slow rap song filled with fake female orgasm noises. <laughs> Not with a passenger in the car. A female poet being interviewed about her latest book. You recognize the inimitable voice of one of your passengers. Hey, your first passenger. An ad interrupts the torrent of words and you change the station. Classical music again. The flute grates on your ears. You, This guy doesn't like any music, does he? Electronic music. You like the rhythm, but just aren't in the mood. Uh, voice. Stop! You lift your hand from the dial. The music plays on. Not bad. Turn it up so I can hear better. Oh, I didn't want to wake you. His voice sounds like it's coming from a deep cavern. I wasn't sleeping, just sobering up. He leans forward. Not bad at all. You hear the touch of an accent, probably an American, but someone who's lived most of his life in France. Leave it on until they say the musician's name. The music continues. There's something turning in the background, a persistent melody that gets higher and higher. Your client mumbles. I bet. The song is, com song is coming to an end, and the announcer, in a piercing, foghorn voice, throws out the name of a DJ you've never heard of. DJ Blunt. I knew it. You famous? Yeah, quite actually. I taught that dude everything he knows. Everything. Stream is still online. Let's try that again. Stream is still on online, right? Because it's freezing for me again and I'm not seeing any new chat messages, so just check again. Oh, fine. Okay, cool. In 94, at a party at the Rex Club, there was this kid who started buying me rounds. He waves his hand around. A kid no older than 17. I thought he was hitting on me. <laughs> he chuckles. He would have been disappointed. He shakes his head. Nah, he wanted me to teach him how to spin. I told him no. But you can watch. And that's exactly what he did every week until we moved to the Osiris. He sold eggs to pay his way in. <laughs> and now he's on the radio. Silence fills the cab. Weighted silence. You could tell your passenger's mind is spinning. You know what he did this summer? He was the opener for the soccer championship. Stade de France. It was huge. Wonder what people would think if they knew he was selling drugs at 17. He lowers his voice a bit. They only knew. Your passenger clams up. You stare at your passenger and notice little details revealing how old he must be. The thinning hair on top of his head. The creases in his forehead. His worn blazer that he can't quite fasten anymore. We ran into each other in Ibiza four or five years ago. You almost jump at the sound of his voice. I was spinning in this little club. Yeah, pretty little, but it was something. He totally ignored me, of course. Even with those dark glasses, you can see how angry he is. DJ motherfucking cunt. He suddenly starts waving his arms around. He rummages through his pockets as he says, Uh, your radio. Can it take a flash drive? You glance at your radio. You don't really know what he's talking about. <laughs> okay, Gramps. Uh, I don't know. No worries. He lays his phone in the space between the front of the two front seats. Listen to this. It's what I played tonight. It's mine. He sets his phone to play. 
but you know, people were barely dancing. A drum machine playing a hard-edged beat in the background. They were talking, taking each other's pictures. Four notes start to dance in the cab. They barely touch, never kiss anymore. A perfect dance beat becomes progressively audible. All that, a purely electronic crescendo plays. Is over. What, people don't kiss anymore? I mean, sure, in 2021, <laughs> clubbing is kind of dead, but I think this game is two years old. <laughs> There's a break in the music. Synthesized strings calm the song down without slowing it down. At least... The song is getting intense again. Explodes as your passenger drifts off. I got people dancing. The song keeps going for another minute. Then stops. Your passenger doesn't budge. You drive to the rhythm of his snoring. The sound fills the cab. Ideas are bouncing through your head, like they do every time you find yourself alone. This guy in the back seat is too old to be young. What? Wait, what? Is that... Sorry, did I misread that sentence, or is that really the sentence that was just there? He's too old to be young? You look at your own hands. They look like they're suddenly aging in time lapse. You close your eyes a second. Only a second. When you open them, you've reached your destination and have pulled over to the sidewalk. Ugh. Mmm. I need to take a break. You tap your passenger's knee and he wakes with a start. Shit. Yeah. We're here, sir. Ah, yeah. Great. He rummages through his pockets and hands you a few rumpled bills for fare. Thanks. I hope you liked it. Silence. The music, I mean, my music, the song I played you. Oh, he's not young, but he's younger than me, so I'm old as fuck, that kind of thing. Really? I thought maybe like more towards the direction of like he's styled as if he were young but he's clearly past the age where he should be, you know, dressing and, and styling himself the way that he does. But in either way, but either way, it, I, that sentence is kind of weird. It would fit with the suddenly my hand look old. Yeah, that was the other part that confused me. I should have been in the spotlight, you see. 15 minutes of fame. Just a minute of... <clears throat> you hear him mumble as he leaves the taxi. Those whiskey and oranginas really screw with my system. Ugh. You see him stagger toward his building. It takes him several tries to get the, uh, get the door open. He finally disappears inside. You heave a long sigh. Okay, come on. Oh, he tipped well. There she is. That's who I wanted to pick up. Ooh, that's far. That's a bit. That's a long trip. Oh well, Miriam Bardot, Bastille. Your next passenger's passenger has that overtired look worn by so many young Parisians. She collapses into the back seat and mumbles an address on the other side of the city. And she has restless leg syndrome. You start driving. You discreetly watch her in the rearview mirror. Her face looks familiar. Maybe she's famous? Maybe you've driven her before? After a few minutes, you decide she must be a babysitter. Young, not necessarily wealthy, an expression of utter boredom on her face. You often pick up this kind, especially in nice neighborhoods. You sense your passenger wants to talk about the killer. It's simple, since the first murder everyone thinks they know something, 
Everyone thinks they saw something. We have this already. And this passenger is no exception. You choose to keep an eye on the road. Out your window, Paris is just beginning to fall asleep. Occasionally, you catch her glancing discreetly at you, like maybe she recognizes you too. Several minutes go by before she dares break the silence. May I ask you something? She leans forward slightly. Yeah. You and I have already talked. You may not remember, but I was babysitting for an Iranian family and... She leaves her sentence hanging. I just... I just yeah. She smells of questions. Yeah. <laughs> of course. She smiles. Though her eyes tell you she's not entirely sure you're telling the truth. It's not all the same situation anyway. These are new clients. And I think I'm in love with the father. You speed up unconsciously. In love? Yes, in love. She smiles at you, then looks quickly outside at the road. It's late. A few pedestrians are walking up the street, heads buried in their co coats and scarves. I can't stop thinking about him. There's something warm about him, about the way he moves. He's so sweet. A bit distant, maybe a bit disconnected. You think you have a chance? She shakes her head. No. None the slightest. He loves his wife. It's obvious he loves her. I can see the love in his eyes when he looks at her. Same with the sun. No. No chance whatsoever. She snickers. I should stop reading these out and just do it. <laughs> it's not really my style to fall in love so easily. Actually, that never happens to me. I've had a few boyfriends, one girlfriend, nothing serious, nothing, you know, no real attachment. But this... She opens her eyes wide. She's speaking to herself more than to you. Her fingers slide over the window as she leaves a message you can't see from the front seat. And that's why I left him a message tonight. A message? Yes. A letter that has slipped into his coat pocket. Her eyes start to wander again. She's elsewhere. He used to play rugby. He's got an amazing build. He's got a bit of a belly now and it pulls on his shirt, and it pulls on his shirt buttons. Her eyes twinkle. I love it. It makes me melt. The belly? <laughs> Sorry, I'm being a dick again. When I close my eyes, I picture him. She stops as if she'd only just realized she wasn't alone in the taxi. What are you hoping will happen? I... I don't really know. I hope he'll tell me how he feels. That he'll turn me down. That things will be clear. I can't take this anymore. I'm worn out, tired of seeing him all the time without being able to touch him. There's one question you're dying to ask. Has he come on to you? She smiles. No, no, no. It's, it's like I don't even exist. His wife takes care of everything. She calls me, pays me, orders the cab. She's lovely. Adorable, actually. And the little kid is an angel. Always smiling, always in a good mood. He... She needs a moment to complete her sentence. He barely says hello. It's like I don't even exist. She looks away. You've almost reached your destination. The young lady leans forward suddenly, like she's surprised to find herself at the end of her street near her building. 
she smiles, but her face is like a solid rock. Yeah, true. Although after the uh, few occasions yesterday where people actually did smile when it said that in the text, I'm kind of relieved that they didn't or that she's not smiling because so far smiles have looked really, really scary in this game. <laughs> um, hold on. Man, blue always made, like lights me up. I should be ashamed, shouldn't I? Her eyes are filled with tears. She's shaking a bit. You hear from the tone of her voice that she's panicking. No. She nods. Ah, oh, yes. I know I should be. I shouldn't have. You pull up to the sidewalk while she heaves an odd sigh. A stifled sob, perhaps. I'm such an idiot. She pays her fare and gets quickly out of the cab. She practically runs to her building, unlocks the door, and throws herself into the lobby. You slowly re uh, release the steering wheel and stop to catch your own breath. You take a moment and turn the key in the ignition. Okay, let's see. Anyone relevant? Nope. Not right now. So let's just take someone who's close. Have we seen her before? Let's take let's take her. Oh sorry, it's a he. The hair threw me off. That's quite the ways away. You were intending to walk that? Oh well, come on. The passenger getting in your cab smells like a grandpa. Stale smoke, a bit of sweat. It's always the smells. Ever since, who was it? Hovering head where I pointed that out? It's true. Like, everything in this game is about smells. I think somebody, like, felt like they cracked the code about how to evoke feelings. <laughs> well, maybe that's presumptuous of me. Stale smoke, a bit of sweat, an ounce of aftershave. The kind that makes your eyes sting. He gets settled, gives you his address, and off you go. You know how older folks function. They want to talk. Small talk, the weather, the election. But this guy, something keeps him from saying anything. It's like he has a secret and doesn't dare open his mouth for fear he'll spit his, spill his guts. Been keeping up with the killer case? He raises his head, gives you a weak smile. The judge, right? <laughs> terrible, terrible story. I was a concierge for over 45 years, you know. I've heard stuff about this story. He looks lost in thought. He starts to pontificate. He tells you some rumors he heard from former colleagues, but there's nothing you don't know already. After speaking for quite a while, he ends with a long sigh. It makes me sad, you know? The world has become such a violent, terrible place. He nods, sadly. I mean, I can't complain, I'm retired. I live a quiet little life. I have my little rituals now. <laughs> I go to the library to read the paper. I say hi to my colleagues. My former colleagues, that is. <laughs> and I finish each day with a little glass of wine in the bistro next to my old building. And then when I've had too much to drink, I treat myself to a taxi ride. <laughs> I hope to do the same when I retire. Ah, uh, well, that... That all seems a bit complicated for your generation. The world is changing so much that in 10 or 20 years time, you might not have retirement anymore. Well, gee, thanks. Thanks for the reality check. You have to work and work and work till you're 70, 80 maybe. He shrugs. Of course, if you're still physically able, why not? I had to retire because I couldn't take care of my building anymore. Cleaning, fixing, 
going up and down those damn stairs. He grumbles for a while before quieting down again. You sense the conversation has run itself dry. You look at the time and think this little old guy should be in bed by now. And... He sits up straight in the back seat like he just woke up. And I also play the lottery, of course. <laughs> the nice old man is giving off a warm, pleasant aura, but he stinks. Same numbers every week for the last 30 years. <laughs> you watch your passenger's face in the rearview mirror. Good humored, kind. You take a liking to him. Hey. Imagine you win 100 million euros. What would you do with it? If I won 100 million, you think it over for a second. For starters, you could pay back your debts and your mortgage. And there's aid and the kids. Jackie, maybe, though she'd probably refuse. So would aid. The old man in the back seat clears his throat politely. A sign. He's waiting for your answer. <laughs> this is cute. We haven't had any indication. No man. Oh yeah. <laughs> Irony. The song that expresses it message not by nothing better than by the fact that in fact nothing in it is actually ironic um let's just pick the because that was his thought right whether they would accept it or not <gasps> your loved ones nice idea but with a hundred million you'd still have enough left to do whatever you wanted <laughs> Go crazy, indulge yourself. <laughs> but why do all that alone? What's the point in spending so much money? You smile. What about you? You all but turn around to look at your passenger. What would you do with 100 million euros? For 30 seconds, he says nothing. His eyes dash back and forth between the road, your face in the rearview mirror, and his hands. You're not far from your destination. Oh, I already won the lottery. How much? 434 million euros. Seriously? Yes. About two months ago. This is really risky. He shouldn't be telling this to some random dude driving a taxi. Holy shit. <laughs> My number showed up after 30 years. He smiles. What did you do with it? I gave it all away. All of it? All of it. They wired me the money and I gave it all away. The charities here and in Portugal, where I'm from. I gifted some to my son. Uh, about 50,000 euros, no more. Uh, here, here's my building. You pull over as soon as you can. Weren't all the victims so far kind of wealthy? Oh, you really paid attention. I think two of them were. So yeah. Maybe, maybe actually, we are the killer. Da-da-da. No, I don't think that's true. Are you fucking kidding me? Why would I do- why would I say that? That's so rude. Why just 50,000? Oh, you see, my son is a nice boy. He went to a good school and works hard, but... He decided to work in finance. Good evening! Hi, Artex. <laughs> He doesn't need any more money. He pays his fare. You're unable to say anything. Oh, and also, I worked for decades for the upper class in the 16th arrondissement. They're all, um, stockholders. Yes, that's it. They have stock portfolios. 
They don't need to work. I didn't want to spend my money to be like them, nor to make them richer. Never, ever. All those limousine liberals, those old reactionaries. A look of disgust crosses his face. I saw things. Children thrown out of their homes. Old people left to rot. Those people love almost everything, but it's the almost that drives them mad. It consumes them. No, no. I gave it all to hospitals, schools, charities. He sighs like he just finished a good meal. <sighs> the moral of the story, young man. Meet your needs. No more, no less. You're incredible. Ah, realistic. I'm realistic and old and falling apart. But realistic. He pats you on the shoulder. And of course, this'll be your little secret, right? His question hangs in the air as he gets out of the cab. You watch him. He walks into a crumbling building in a bad neighborhood in East Paris. It makes you want to laugh and scream. Instead, you turn the key in the ignition. 30 bucks tip. Hey. Oh, look. It's one of a suspects on the other end of the city. <laughs> I thought the story was so he didn't have to pay his fare. <laughs> oh, that would have been really, really cheeky and really smart. But he turned... Oh, him again. Mm, no, but we already took him. I want to drive her. So we've talked to, to her. Well, he still gets a retirement, I assume, right? Just got a Twitch notification that my favorite stream is online. Okay, there's nothing in the notification. You pick up your next passenger in front of the Paris office of the medical examiner, the morgue. When she gets in, you are surprised. How can she be a suspect? Her face, beautiful and soft, doesn't go with her clothing, her style, or her attitude. She gives, okay, what is your attitude? She gives you her address and you start driving. Her voice is dry, great, another dry voice. <laughs> dry, frank, and she has an accent you have trouble determining. South American, maybe? She seems far away, lost in thought. A few seconds go by, and she still hasn't taken so much as a look at you. Everything okay? She almost jumps out of her seat and looks like she wants to disappear. Yes, everything is fine. That accent again. The one you can't place. Oh, where's your accent from? My... accent? She raises her head, surprised by your question. Argentina. It must be breathtaking. Yes, it's quite beautiful. She takes a pause. Although it's been years since I've been back. Why? I, I prefer France. Oh, don't look surprised. It's complicated. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but there was a dictatorship in Argentina. She lowers her voice a bit and it sounds far away. By the way, I'm not going to try to actually do it in as Argentinian Spanish accent because I don't know how, what that sounds like. <laughs> and I'm not too sure on my Spanish. So you would just get some sort of accent. So apologies to anyone from Argentina. There was a military junta. My parents died. I didn't think I could go back. France is just fine. It's a beautiful country. Oh, 
Why should anyone prefer France? So France is a country, not a language player's choice. <laughs> okay, you corrected yourself. A smile flashes across her face but disappears almost immediately. France welcomed a great deal of South Americans in the 70s. Argentinians, Chileans, Bolivians. A sad smile runs across her face like a shooting star. That's a really weird comparison. A second goes by, slowly, very slowly. Then the meteorite explodes. Oh, oof. Really sticking to that metaphor. Your passenger breaks down. Between sobs, you hear her say something. Give me a minute, please. Without a word and without the slightest noise, you slow down. The road passes by slowly, in no hurry. After a moment, she sits up. Oh, can, can I ask you something? You nod. She takes a deep breath. This may seem like a ridiculous question, but, or at least a stupid one. Actually, it's completely stupid. You give her an encouraging smile. But... I'd like you to hit on me. She blushes and immediately follows up. I mean, not for real, just for play. Like we're at a bar, like you want to buy me a drink. She shakes her head. Forget it, it's stupid, totally stupid. What is it that you want me to do exactly? I... My job is very difficult. Complicated. I don't get out much. I'm not much of a pudgier. And internet dating, not my thing. That sounded Indian. <laughs> It makes me really uncomfortable. <sighs> Maybe I'm desperate, but I feel like being... hit on. Yes, hit on. Plain and simple. I could care less if that shocks you or if you think it's funny. As long as you play along. So? This is really awkward. So, you come here often? <laughs> Let's go for it, whatever. Let's get ourselves into a lawsuit, potentially. I... thank you. She smiles discreetly at you. That warms my heart, really. I just have a few rules, if you don't mind. First, I don't want to talk about Argentina, my home, my parents. Avoid the subject. She pauses. Does that work for you? You nod. Good. Second, I don't want to talk about work. I'm a medical examiner. And do you know what that is? Yes. Oh, she's gonna tell me anyway. Okay. I cut open dead bodies. Take out bullets, tumors, cirrhosis, filled livers. The first people are always fascinated, but they quickly get disgusted. So, nothing about work. Let's start, if you're ready. You nod. We're in a bar. It's not very late. Not very late, but we're the only ones there. I'm alone at the bar, finishing a drink. I get up to leave. It's so awkward. Yeah, right? It's really awkward. Please, go ahead. Hitting on a passenger. This is definitely a first. You gotta find a good line. Something that will set the tone. Okay, so is this full on fantasy? <laughs> or, or is this, let's go polite. Let's, let's be slow, all right? Let's play this real. Excuse me. Yes. Her voice is softer. Oh, yes. Her accent's stronger. May I join you? Of course. She sits up a little and points to the imaginary bar next to her. 
Buy me a drink? Of course. How about a little game? You look like the kind of guy who drinks cocktails. Something sweet. I could be wrong, but... And what about me? What is my kind of drink? She rolls the R on the last word. Something stiff. Something strong. Something subtle. What do you mean? You want something special? You want to be surprised by life? She bursts out laughing. <laughs> Aren't you good at this game? She gets back into character. Yes, that is it exactly. You read me like a book. She stares at you. Something about her posture in the back seat is different. Don't you think time goes by too slowly? I do. We wait, we hold on, we get bored. I'd like it all to go faster, for things to speed up. <laughs> She's letting go. She looks at you expectantly. Fail out of the game immediately? I like the way you laugh. You... you do? That's an odd compliment. It, how is that an odd compliment? It's fucking lovely, and it's also not really that imaginative. <laughs> but whatever, it's an odd compliment. It's true. I... thank you. She closes her eyes and stays that way for a little while. A smile settles onto her face. A warm, natural, and uncontrolled smile. Thank you. You were perfect. Unusually kind. She nods slowly. I must confess that the way you came on to me was truly charming. You have very kind eyes. No, I, I actually, ma'am, I don't have any eyes. I haven't even seen my own eyes. Not even when I elucidated myself in the backseat. So that's an odd compliment, but thank you. Your passenger sighs contently. She seems happy. Relieved. You pull up in front of the address she gave you. It's strange. What's that? There's something different about you. You're not like other men. As if... <laughs> Cause that can be nice? <laughs> yes, actually, ma'am, that's because I'm being played by a woman. No, come on, like what? As if... She hands you her fear and slips you a tip. Don't refuse it, please. It means something to me. You nod. I hope to run into you again. You shiver. One last smile. Goodbye. She gets out of the cab. You watch her until she disappears into her building. 14 bucks tips for a weird car flirt. Nice. Well, yeah, we're at the edge of town. Oh, she looks nice. She looks cool. No, 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 this would not what I wanted to click on. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I wanted to look at everyone first. Let's take a hard left, because she looks more interesting to me. Also, I'm going to have to come up with a new voice again. Jesus, why is everything so far? I guess what, that's what you take a taxi for. Lola Hopkins. She British, huh? Your next passenger is heavily pregnant. <laughs> okay. You go to help her inside, but she waves you away with a hand. I'm fine. Judging from accent, she's not from Paris. Not from France. English, or maybe American. Things just take a bit longer these days. She settles in, adjusting her coat around her huge belly. You gun the accelerator and set off. Instinctively, you find yourself driving more deliberately, not slower. Just carefully. You regard the women in the mirror. 
She's staring out of the window with a thousand yard stare, her hands wringing themselves around each other like a fistful of snakes. Oh, that's so patronizing. You're trying to place the accent, aren't you? You nod sheepishly. I'm from the UK. Wait, Manchester. I'm from Manchester. I mean, that's in the UK, but the distinction is important, especially these days. Say the UK and everyone assumes you're from London. I fucking hate London. You're driving a fair few, but you've driven a fair few British people over the past years. Most don't speak a word of French. Many had an odd sense of pride in their lack of language ability. But accent aside, the young woman behind you is fluent. Oh, I didn't mean to offend. She looks away from the window and into your eyes. You try a smile. Her face softens. But don't worry about it. <laughs> you get used to it. There are worse things you could have opened with. I didn't open with anything. I was silent. <laughs> she shifts uncomfortably. I don't know much about Manchester. <laughs> Not even United or City. At first you don't get the reference. Then you realize she's talking about football. Or soccer. Uh, I don't really follow all that. Smart man. A bunch of overpaid wankers kicking a fancy balloon about. If it's not, oh, you're from London, it's which team do you support? Spare me. She pauses and runs a hand over her belly. <sighs> we miss it. Manchester. Marcus Street on the way home from work. Fog Lane Park on Sunday morning. Bricky's tea and a bacon barn. She sighs and looks down at her bump. She hasn't stopped kicking since we left. She's a feisty one, that's for sure. That's her French side. Oh, she's half French. Not sure as half. <laughs> I'm the one doing the heavy lifting. But definitely a good third or so, yeah. That's why I'm over here. I made insisted a little bugger pops out over here. Gets herself a new passport. The smile on her face dies in place and she stares out of the window again. And he needed to get out of the UK after her. After everything that happened. You mean the political situation? <sighs> Fucking Brexit. As soon as she's spoken, her mouth folds into an O oh, and a groan spills from her throat. Oof, I swear every time I talk about Brexit. Another grimace. She kicks the shit out of my fucking womb. She rubs her belly and mumbles a few soothing words. After a moment, she returns her attention to you. But yeah, fucking B word. I mean, no one thought it was actually going to happen. You see the campaigners out on the streets, remain and leave, you pass them off as, a f as fanatics or something. I wasn't into politics, but you know, when it's on the news every night, something leaks through. Something gets you thinking. I mate was more into it than I was. Kept bringing home those flyers, blue for remain and red for leave. It was a fucking primary school popularity contest. Or something. You look back and notice her hand go to her mouth. She just starts plucking nervously at her bottom lip. Must have been scary. Yeah, nothing was ever positive. Every argument, every headline. Non-stop fucking negativity. Fuck did we stay? Fuck did we leave? Promises from every side. Numbers, predictions, posters, billboards. I have actually- I have no idea what Manchester sounds like. I'm just going like all over the place in the UK. I hope no one's from the UK here. <laughs> Cause then I think I could pass it off. <laughs> a few weeks before the vote. No word of a lie, the whole fucking city felt like a bomb about to explode. People at work are getting into slanging matches about this bit or that bit. How could you possibly think versus you don't know what you're talking about? When the result came back, there was about 20 minutes of celebration. And the brakes kicked on something harsh. Walking to work that morning, you couldn't help but judge everyone. 
Like, I wonder which way she voted. There were a couple of fights at work, like proper fights, fists swinging all over the place. If there's one thing insecure fucking men need, it's something to throw for punches about. How did you feel? Like everyone else, I suppose. Confused, scared. In the afternoon, you could see none of the fucks in London knew what to do. Did you see those leave cunts on TV? Supposed to be jumping up and down about winning and they stood there looking like they shat the bed. Which was, you know, ironic, because that's exactly what they did. Now with God knows how many months since and fuck all's happened except everyone's even more scared. He's got real bad, bad after. I met had, in, had a few run-ins with Brexiteers. You know, the, the hardline knobs with Union Jack hoodies and Winston Churchill tattoos. Well, she's told him to fuck off home. He could do with that. He'd have the same over here. But one group... We were together one time and a group of them told me to fuck off with him. Called me a traitor. A traitor! That was full on Australian. A traitor. Idiot squared up to them. Things got... tense. First time I'd ever been glad to see her copper. So yeah, we fucked off. Wasn't worth it over there. I mean, job, jobs had dried up anyway. No one wanted to hire a foreigner. Been staying with this lot, with his lot over here ever since. Spare room. His mum doesn't speak a word of the Queen's. Her dad tries bless him. They love baked beans. She smiles to herself. Right. Now this one's almost here. I don't know. I don't fucking know. She shifts again, the seat creaking under her weight. <laughs> That's a sound you seldom hear. What would you have done? I mean, if you ever have a Frexit vote or something, how would you vote? I'd vote to remain. The EU isn't perfect. It's pretty bad, actually, from what I've heard. The division isn't an answer, it's a statement. And the people behind such statements have their own goals. Goals that aren't on any billboards or flyers. Your answer seems to shake your passenger. She tugs on her lip, aggressive, lip aggressively and her other hand balls itself into a fist. <laughs> Everyone was so scared. After the vote, yeah. But before and all. We had the Remain side telling us how fucked we were if we left. And they leave us telling us how fucked we'd be if we stayed. But I saw Mum raise me and my brother are nothing. Nothing. Benefits didn't amount to anything. No one wanted to help a black single mother provide for her kids. And then we get these fuckers turning up at our house telling us how much worse off we'd be if we leave. I mean, how much worse could it have gotten? When you're in this shit, change becomes very fucking attractive. You have people offering you the same old, same old, and others pushing for something new. Promising change and a new start. How the fuck do you think you're gonna vote when the same old ain't giving you shit? You voted leave? What else was I gonna do? She sucks a gallon of air into her lungs and continues. If I the vote, it was all about making our own laws again. Serving people 2,000 miles away telling us how to live. Her accent thickens as her voice cracks. It were about making sure we were looked after, you know? Mum's almost on her pension. I wanted, I just wanted to do her best by her. There was no talk of stopping anyone who ain't English living there. It weren't about that to me. I know it's all fucked. You pull up to her destination and she fumbles her fare over to you. Sorry about all that. Stress is bad for the baby. Yeah, let's just turn into a complete douche. No problem. I understand. Yeah. At least over here everything's... You know, well. Over there. I don't have to think about it every fucking moment. I never told Ahmed that I... You know. Voted the way I did. He wouldn't understand. She moves to leave. 
You go to help again, but she smiles a fit she smiles a refusal at you. Really, it's okay. But I appreciate the offer. Makes me feel welcome. A few moments later, she waddles slowly to a door. Her hands continue to twist themselves into shapes as she waits for an answer, until finally she disappears inside. You sigh and set off into the night. 21 cents. Uh... Oh, oh, that's it, okay. You have met Hussein. Hussein? So that's my name? The devil? You fell asleep. Okay, so time for evidence checking, I guess. We don't have anything new, do we? Nope. Okay. Claudia, parents died during the junta. Oi. Uh, I guess it's her. I mean, that would explain the sudden outburst of crying. I still didn't get that. And I don't think that quite explains itself away by her wanting to be wooed. And at the very least, Stuff for victim three is really racking up. I still don't see this. This is just prejudice. This one, see, I don't get why this one is connected to everybody, but something like this isn't. Like, are some people not able to operate chalk? <laughs> can't really do anything because the board does it all for me this is all old news Just when you're about to fall asleep, you think you hear a voice in the distance. Two and two. You jump, without understanding where the voice is coming from. Outside, Paris is waking up. And you fall asleep. Open one eye, you slept badly, blah blah. You'd like to understand how that's even... You get up quickly, and a few minutes later, you're outside of your studio. Four? Sorry, what's that in... Uh, what's what's that in reference to Varath? Eight. What? <laughs> oh, that. Uh, we've talked to him before, haven't we? Yeah, I want to pick up new people. Whatever. Ugh. 
Javier Tuchev. I need to uh, get out of here. Okay, sure. You pull up next to the sidewalk, a few meters from an abandoned warehouse. No sign of your passenger. You wait a minute, staring at the meter. You really don't feel like wasting your time on people who... You hear a window break on the second floor of the warehouse. A body falls heavily to the sidewalk. You lay your hand on the door handle when... A man, dressed entirely in black, jumps out the window and lands on the body. He stands up and takes a few steps over to your cab. Uh... Ugh. Uh... Are you the cab I ordered? You nod your head at very, very slowly. Super. I'm the one you're waiting for. Be right there. He turns around, places his fingers on the neck of the in in inanimate body, takes his pulse. He comes back over, opens the door, and jumps into the back seat. Jesus. <laughs> you can start driving. Yay, yeah, please. You follow orders without a second thought. In back, your passenger smells like sweat and gunpowder. <laughs> it's a new smell! He's been running, been in a fight, maybe. Probably. Is it, are we, like, are we making assumptions about something we literally just witnessed? I feel like he's maybe in a fight. It's either the smell or the fact that I just saw him throw somebody out of a window that's giving me that idea. I'm not sure which one it is. His muscles bulge in rhythm with his heart, which is racing. Good evening. Pretty good, yeah. He smiles, or tries to. You can see blood on his otherwise impeccably white teeth. I screwed up a little, but all in all, it was a good evening. You? Uh, yes. Okay, all right. Come on, let's talk about the elephant in the room. You're on to me, and you know it. I'm the masked joker. Ah, him. Silence, you squint to get a closer look at your passenger. The Masked Joker, the hero that makes Parisian nights more peaceful, no? You slowly shake your head. Nope, doesn't ring a bell. I'm all over Twitter, so probably on the radio and in the newspaper, I think. <laughs> and what exactly do you do? I protect people, I'm a guardian. Like a superhero. No, I don't have any superpowers. <laughs> but it's the same idea? Yes, I mean for the moment I mostly take care of small time crooks, pickpockets. It's not very prestigious, but you have to step somewhere. <laughs> Check that on Twitter. You open your mouth, but nothing worth saying comes out. You've gotta start somewhere. So, how about the name? Do you like it? <laughs> Awful. I'm not sure I get it. It's the Joker, like the card, and masked because I'm wearing a mask. Silence ensues. Your passenger eventually clears his throat. See, I wanted something that wasn't too. He searches for the right word, beats around the bush, and eventually comes out with... Problematic. I did a lot of brainstorming and came up with the masked Joker. I haven't gotten great feedback, but it's hard these days to find a name everyone likes. You have to make sacrifices if you want your core business to succeed. <laughs> what the fuck? That's what they tell you at school anyway. At school? Yes, and the NK. I don't know what ENK is. He freezes. Shit, I almost gave you the name of my business school. What an idiot. Can you imagine if Bruce, Bruce Wayne went around telling everyone he was Bruce Wayne? No. Ba Batman! If Batman went around telling everyone he was Bruce Wayne. No, I'm getting all mixed up. He touches his sides for a while, like he's looking for a wound. You're getting close to your destination. I think I... I'm hurt. You, you learn from your mistakes. Get out of my car. You want me to take you to the hospital? No, no, I'm fine. I shouldn't have... 
jumped out of the window like that. But you were already coming down the street and I didn't want you to make you wait. <laughs> you smile. Pull over right here, there in front of the driveway. You obey. Don't worry, it's, it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> I'd be home in two minutes, Dude, I have everything I need to take care of myself. He pays and struggles to get out of the cab. Ah, uh, one last thing. Please don't say anything about the Enkin. I'm trying to lead a double life and it's not super easy. Enkid? Enkid, my business school. He freezes. Oh, I just got it. You're playing along. Okay, great. He looks at you for a minute. You're a really classy guy. He walks away, limping. You watch him as he tries several times to enter his building code before heading inside, finally. As you go to start the engine, you notice a few drops of blood in your fingers from the bills your passenger handed you. Cool. He's the night you drove yesterday, yeah. <laughs> You beat the drug dealer and you snorted at some while doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a very vivid imagination, that one. Okay, we're taking someone who's close. That's so far. I don't want to go that far. Also, I need to get gas. I don't want to do that either. Ugh. Fine. La 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 la. What? I'm not going that way. I wanted to go in gas. You slow down. Thanks for railroading me again. You hear a strange sound, a startling one. Like someone is in, in the trunk. You shake your head, lower your eyes, slowly. You know what you're about to find there. You dare the glance behind you. He is there. So, butthead? Happy to see me again? He reveals a row of pearly whites. Too white. No worries, I won't be here long. You're not gonna get the job done. You close your eyes, hoping this mirage will vanish. You probably won't be able to help that whore. Who? Oh, the, oh, the cop, okay. Maybe you'll finally realize she was just using you. I, I mean, <sighs> she's blackmailing me for one, so obviously she's using me. You squeeze your eyes shut and see colorful shapes appear, dance around you, disappear. That's your problem. You always want to, <laughs> no, I'm being extorted. <laughs> this doesn't even make any sense. But no one ever wants to help you. There's no reciprocity. It's all one way. And that bitch is just like all the others. She's not a whore. I need to just get through this. That's what I learned last time. He ignores you. I didn't say anything. He raises his voice, not paying the least bit of attention. Okay, so it always gives me the option to say nothing, but it barely ever expects me to take it. She treats you like shit. She's threatening you. Yeah, good morning, yeah, I know. She's ready to drop you to avoid losing face. I don't get you. They already locked you up once. You wanna go back in? No, that's why I'm doing this. I had no choice. His laughter sends chills down your spine. There's something vulgar about it. <laughs> Seriously, man. You had no choice, whatever. Run, man. Take your taxi and run. My humble advice? Uh, but who am I to give advice anyway? You always have a choice. Always. Not me. Not them. You feel his gaze bear down on you. I don't know what you tell your passengers. Get the fuck out. He shrugs. You're a piece of shit and you know it. Making deals with traitors, sucking dick so you won't end up in jail. Man, you're the victim here. Be a victim, use victimhood to your advantage. It doesn't happen every day. 
that the other time, you weren't the victim. He flashes his teeth in the rearview mirror. Killing your own brother? No, that's something. He bugs his eyes out, mocking surprise or horror. Pretty hardcore. There you go. I like it when you get angry. Sure as you got something in your shorts. <sighs> you suddenly feel nauseous. Let me tell you what your problem is. You thought you could actually had it you actually had a chance in life. Your gut is burning, like its contents are ready to spew all over the windshield. Like your good grades in school, your faggoty little books. The guy is studying is gay. As if three months you spend in college might actually change anything. But you're nothing. According to the people of this country, you don't count. You throw up a little in your mouth. The bile stings your throat. According to the people you protect and drive all over Panam, you don't count. You double over the steering wheel. Your stomach burns, but nothing's coming up. You glance behind you and realize you're alone in the cab. It's just you. You wipe the sweat from your forehead and start driving again. The smell of the motor reassures you. <laughs> it calms you down. <laughs> Alright, can I get gas now? Oh man. Um, I can appreciate, I think, what this game sets out to do, but it, I'm getting to a point where it's, it's feeling too, it's starting to feel drawn out to me, one, and two, my suspension of disbelief is being disrupted too often for me to actually get into this and like be excited about it. So, unless the end of this case absolutely knocks me off my socks, as, no, <laughs> knocks my socks off, <laughs> that's the expression. <laughs> unless that happens, um, I think we'll only play this one case. Uh, I think Mesh was the, the person in the stream that uh, played it before. Uh, it would have been nice if he could have given us like some sort of insight on if, it's get, if it gets more interesting or more... Um, Let's do that first. Uh, or, you know, if uh, if the next few cases feel a bit less... I don't know. So, uh, whatever. Um, but I think as things are now, I might just move on to another game. No, no, Mesh definitely did. Uh, I think it was Shellag who didn't. Who'd never heard of it. Which is quite funny because she like plays, you know, plays a lot of games, knows a lot of games. But uh, I think Mesh was the one who played it before, and Alex was the one who recommended it. Uh, Zombie Flash Cult. Uh, na na, welcome. I'm not gonna read this. This is just fluff. Uh, let's look at the paper. Come back tomorrow. Okay. Yay, we got a clue from the clerk. Back. Have a good evening. Blah, blah, blah. Car. Let's go. Okay. I've been seeing a lot of this guy, too. So unless there's one of our suspects around. No. So I'm going to pick him up. Group of noisy teenagers, blah blah, fluff fluff. Milo Reacher, you pull up in front of the American Embassy. You can't recall ever picking up a customer here. They probably have a fleet of their own. Or a contract with a private company. The door opens. You take- oh shit, I pressed too early, sorry. Bam, is a farmer? You find him somehow reassuring, like a lost tourist. He babbles something in English. You have to listen hard to make out the address. Sorry, I'm just back in Paris. I've forgotten my manners. He flashes you a sparkling smile. His voice is tinged with a slight American accent. You turn the key in the ignition. 
Thanks. What's your name, pal? You're surprised to hear him use the familiar to form straight off the boat. Is it Hussein? It's Hussein, right? Not Hussein. Because of the E. Hussein. Nice to meet you, Hussein. He stares at you intently for a moment. My name is... Hi, my name is... Well, if I reveal my name, I believe with no other choice, I'll have to kill you. He pauses. Way too long to be joking. His face darkens. It's a different man on the seat behind you. And then... His face creases into a grin. Hey, amigo, I'm joking. I work for the CIA, that's all. The CIA? Yeah, the CIA. You know Jason Bourne and all that. The spy business. You're a spy. Yeah, you could say that. Is that why your French is so good? I speak eight other languages too. You give him a low whistle. Not bad for a Yankee, eh? He bursts into laughter. No wonder I'm a spy, eh, Amigo? <laughs> Silence hangs in the air. Your passenger seems to be formulating his thoughts. To be fair, this isn't uh, the immediate stereotype from his looks. Uh, baseball cap, American shirt, but the rest... Unless he's lying, of course. You married, Amigo? You shake your head no. Got a girlfriend? Another negative nod. Oh, that's too bad. A good looking guy like you two all alone? What a waste. He gazes absently out the window. Americans are like that. Laid back yet distant. Mm, okay. Maybe it's the booze, amigo. But I can't get this woman out of my head tonight. Man, what a woman. I'm not gonna tell you where she's from. You'll just have to ask a ton of questions. You'll just ask a ton of questions. <laughs> sure. And if you ask questions. Sure, first thing I do when I'm a spy, I immediately tell everybody. No, no. No, remember, this is a, te this is a cab. You can just tell everybody in a cab everything. Nobody's gonna know about it. <laughs> At least that seems to be the attitude of basically everybody we pick up. And if you ask questions, I'm gonna have to lie to you, pal. And with you, I don't wanna lie. Why? You look like you're a chic, chic type. I love that French expression. Chic type. A good guy. A far off look comes over his face. So where she's, where's she from? He clears his throat, then falls into a long silence as if wondering where to begin. Well, it all started in this place in Africa. Between you and me, pal, I really like Africa. People there are more alive. Serious. You just need to be need to spend a couple weeks there. No more than that, or you'll go nuts. You clench your teeth and remain perfectly still. Well, we were working with a minister there. Not a shake type like you. A traitor. A real son of a bitch. Yeah, sure. Oh come on, pal. You're not exactly a choir boy. Your friendships, you're so indecent, your language, your little habits. So don't play shock with me. He stares blankly into space, wondering perhaps if he's divulged some big secret, and then continues his story. A note of bitterness has crept into his voice. Anyhow, the guy was getting difficult. We had two choices, either convince him to see things our way, or sabotage his car. Right, that's usually the two choices I have for when people disagree with me as well. <laughs> That's what makes work in Africa so easy. The cars, I mean. Every continent has its own little quirk, a way of getting things done without any trouble. In Africa, it's the cars. So, I contacted the minister's family and met his wife. She was so beautiful, Omega. Such a beauty. His voice has slowed like a worn out LP. There was this fierceness in her eyes, you know what I mean? An animal spirit. Ugh, yikes. A lopsided grin spreads over his drunken face. She said she didn't like the Americans, prefer the French with their straightforward ways. She made me laugh. When someone dies in Africa, there's always a Frenchman in the picture. Either supply the bullet, the gun, 
Remember the guy who shot? Got shot. He runs his fingers along the seam of his jeans. The material is heavy, almost coarse. She was. <laughs> she was. She was so beautiful. <laughs> she was. She was so beautiful. He's gone off to some faraway time and place. You pull up to the address he's given you. A bar that keeps late night hours. You make out snatches of animated conversation behind the lowered rolling shutter. Well then, I loved her. His voice is tinged with sorrow and regret. A love like no other, amigo. No other. I know? Yeah, I know, buddy. I'm just saying. I know. All at once, he snapped out of his funk. This bar, amigo, is run by Russians. Dissidents from the Soviet era. The boss spent ten years in the gulag, can you imagine? The Russians. Those guys really know how to deal with prisoners. Mm, that's where I would have sent that traitor, Snowden. And now, it's the Russians who are protecting him. He breaks off and raps at the window. What the hell is it? Who the hell is this guy? This is, this is just. I haven't heard the end of your story. My story? Well, there's not much to tell, more to tell, amigo. We loved each other. We slept together. Her husband betrayed his government and mine too. And his car hit a tree at 180 kilometers per hour. That is my story, amigo. In the heavy silence that follows, your blood runs cold. Strictly professional. He reaches into his pocket and hands you a tip. You hesitate a moment, then accept the crumpled note. As he exits the cab, he offers his parting words. There's a moral to my story, amigo. Don't ever marry a son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, such wise words. He climbs out of the cab, howling with laughter. You sit there for a moment, feeling pretty dumb. Your brain is in overdrive, your stomach churning. Can you love someone and then simply forget them, just like that? Hardly seems likely. There's something eating away at your client, either that woman or something else. You start at the cab. Oh, he gave me a whole 16 cents as a tip. <laughs> Not very American of him. <laughs> okay, now everyone's far away. Hey, it's like a, an informant thing. Let's go, let's go hit that up. Oh man, this is really drawing itself out, isn't it? Tell you what, we're gonna finish this night and then I'm just gonna fast pace myself through next next night. I hope that's okay with everybody, but I'm really, my patience is kind of wearing thin and I do want to finish this tonight. Cut a little bit? You leave your taxi behind and walk towards the last victim's building. Charles bougrain Ferré was killed in his parking garage. The large metal garage door is firmly closed. Uh, look for another entrance? You walk around to the back of the building and look at the various entrances. The main one, the garage door, and a maintenance door for the trash cans. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit what? Uh, go back and wait in front of the garage door. You settle into a hiding spot. If a car goes in or comes out, you'll be able to sneak in without being seen. You grin and bear it. From time to time, you jump in place to warm yourself up. Your hiding place is probably the same one the killer used a few weeks ago. With each passing minute, you sense his presence until the garage door starts to shake. The metal slats start to, start to rise. A car suddenly bursts out of the garage. You take the opportunity to slip inside. Your eyes take a few seconds to adjust to the darkness. You are down the ramp into the garage. There are about 30 spots, and almost all of them are full. The cars are very nice. Sedans, convertibles, a bright red sports car. 
you're in a wealthy neighborhood. According to the release police report, Charles Bougrand Ferret was murdered right here, in this empty parking spot. He used to be a notorious leader of the right wing extremist party. When he was murdered at age 84, long after retiring from politics, it was a surprise for everyone. You light up the crime scene with a flashlight on your phone. There's still a brown stain on the wall in front of you. Yikes. Must be a great garage to park in. What you said about the game, it's wearing off? Like, it's its starting to feel long? Sorry, I don't, I don't remember when exactly you wrote that message. Uh, the message written in chalk has been washed off. A voice rings out in the garage. Hey, what are you doing? This is private property. You turn around and see a rather elderly man, probably the concierge. He shines a flashlight in your direction. I'm a fan. I'm a journalist. A journalist? Yes, I'm doing a story on the judge and his victims, including Monsieur Bougrain Ferret. He hesitates. I'm sorry, but I'm not at liberty to tell you anything. I just need two minutes of your time. He nods nervously, or maybe in fright. You have trouble making out his face, but you can see his eyes bug out. Go! Get out of here before I call the cops! You walk back up the ramp towards the ex exit. The concierge opens the garage, do garage door. As you step outside, you hear the concierge say, If I see you lurking around again, I'm calling the cops. You make your way back to your cab. You glance back at the building. The furious concierge, con concierge, <laughs> concierge is gone. You settle in behind the wheel, short of breath. Okay, that didn't do us any good. <sighs> what time is it? Oh god, we have like three more hours. Mm. Oof. Well, that was worth it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Annabelle Robert, she wants to go to the airport. Let's take her to the airport. Your passenger slips into the back seat, dragging a backpack that apparently weighs a ton. You want to put that in the trunk? She refuses politely with a shake of the head. Thanks, but I'm going to have to keep to get used to keeping it with me. It's going to be on my back for an entire month. You smile and start the cab. I glance in the rearview mirror. Your passenger is rather young, and the camera around her neck looks very expensive. Her backpack, scarf, and clothes are fairly worn. Going on vacation? A small, almost nervous laugh escapes her. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that. She looks out the window at the passing road. Should have said you were a bi his biggest fan, obviously. Yeah, I was wondering that. But that's such a weird thing, like, yeah, man, I'm just here to look at the murder scene because I'm, you know, because I really admire the man. <laughs> and then expect the concierge to be like, oh, yeah, let me tell you all about him. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Anyway, we're going into speed read mode. I hope that's okay, and I hope enough will still be understandable. She looks at the window of the passing road. Uh, da -da -da. Where are you going? Libya. Her cool clipped tones immediately bring the conversation to an end. I, uh, sorry. A second or two goes, but uh, a second or two goes by before your passenger can even bring herself to look at you. It's fine. It's it's me. I've been on edge lately. She shrugs. I'm sorry. She's watching you, senses she can talk to you, lowers her gaze. On my way to Greece, to join an NGO rescue vessel. That helps migrants trying to make the crossing. And I'm going to do a story on them. Oh, are you a journalist? She smiles, the first thing since you set off. Yes, a photojournalist. They make a crossing even in winter? They make the crossing whenever they get the chance, regardless of the time of year or the weather. The EU has just closed its surveillance and rescue program. Only non-governmental associations are doing anything to help now. So, I'm on my way. I volunteered. I even made a fuss to get the assignment. Her tone of voice is increasingly shrill. 
I read first-hand accounts. I, I talked to the journalists who have worked on the subject. I can't just ignore the whole thing. She gives a short laugh. <laughs> I even played a video game about, about refugees. Beautifully done. Really powerful. I wonder if that's just a throwaway line or like a reference to something else that somebody in, who worked on this game has done. I knew I couldn't just sit back and watch. This was my chance to show the world what's going on there. Your passenger's phone starts to ring. As she glances at the caller's name, her face freezes. She sighs, a troubled smile flickering across her face, then takes the call. Hi, Dad. I'm in the cab, right? Yeah, I told you. I tried, but he wouldn't change his mind. Come on, Dad. I already told you I'll be fine. They wouldn't be sending me if they were... She moves the phone a bit further from her ear. Come on, Dad, stop. Dad... Listen, everything's going to be fine. I'll be there for 20 days with a group of professionals who have been doing this for years. That's right, a group of rescue professionals. Would you just stop? She sighs heavily. It's no use. She's been down this road a thousand times. We're about to get to a tunnel, mademoiselle. mademoiselle. You're going to cut out. The young woman looks up at you in surprise. Then her face lights up. Glory to our That's definitely not them. Uh, did you hear that? I have to go. I'll get. You, I'll call you back as soon as I'm... She's interrupted again. And that's not a game about rescues, right? That's a game about immigration. <sighs> she hangs up, wide-eyed, and breathes a long sigh. My parents, they can be a little much at times. She smiles. Anyhow, thanks for jumping in there. You can sense the tension, the wave of frustration and anxiety welling up inside of her. Her unhappiness and anxiety are palpable. She closes her eyes, collecting her thoughts, trying to dispel her negative emotions. If I only had a little time. Time for what? Time to, to do yoga. It really helps me relax. It's an amazing way to unwind, to calm down and release tension. There must be a yoga room somewhere in the airport. I could pull over if you'd like. She looks at you closely, not sure what you think. What do you think? What do you mean? Well, there's a gas station up ahead. A rest area for truck drivers. There won't be anyone there right now. I... Alright, sure. Why not? There's no more talk for a few minutes. Your passenger glances out the window every now and then. You drive past the gas station, the main building, the trucks, then get to a small, quiet rest area. A clearing lit up by your headlights and the moon suddenly appears. There's no one around. The air is cool. The young woman leans in towards you. Is this the place? You nod. It's incredibly calm, as if we were in the middle of the woods. Her eyes take in every detail of your tree and bush. Do you come here often? Every now and then. She nods. She understands. I don't I don't understand. Anyway, it's so quiet. Even in the middle of winter, it looks so peaceful. She searches for the door handle. You won't leave without me, will you? Of course not. But you're gonna have to pay more, miss. She gets out of the cab and puts her things on a picnic table. The wind is chilly. She shivers. She gives you one last look, then closes her eyes. For a minute or two, you watch her do doing yoga exercises. Her eyes remain closed. Her face gradually starts to relax. A truck behind you pulls out of the rest area. This place has a calming effect on you, too. Some summer nights, you come here to take a nap. <laughs> the young woman is stretching now. The headlights cast soft shadows among the dark foliage. In the winter, you smoke a cigarette or two, waiting for potential clients to land. The young woman gets back into the cab. She says nothing. There's no need. You sense she's recovered her calm, and she's ready to face the rest of her journey. You drive away, leaving behind the clearing, there blah, blah blah, the young woman is sleeping, the road keeps passing by, before long you're approaching the airport. A moment later you turn on the radio, the song fades. I'll pull up over here, it'll be easier for you to get out of the cab. You get to the airport drop-off zone, a couple of colleagues greet you with a wa wave. A few bleak looking passengers are struggling with huge suitcases and car trunks. The security guard sitting on a luggage cart smokes a cigarette, clearly exhausted. Your passenger pays the fare, collects her things, but doesn't leave the cab. Thank you for getting me out of the horrible phone call. I love my parents, but they are suffocating. Oh, boo-hoo. It could have gone on for hours. So, thank you. I have to go now. I have the feeling my parents are going to call again. Might as well go in where it's warm and I'm not a disturbance. Take care of yourself. I will, promise. She gets out of the cab with all the gear. Your eyes fall out, blah, blah. The airport doesn't close behind. But you sit there for a minute or two all by yourself. There's no one around. May as well, blah, blah, blah. 14 tip. Great. Any suspects around? No, but... Ooh, 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 lots of people driving around... Uh, it's him again. He never gives me any information, he just says weird things. Um, wasn't there an informant? No, I visited them all. But it just gave me the eye, right? Oh, they just stay there. Okay, well then I guess we're going to go pick up... Uh, what is his name? Hervé? 
Let's go pick up our bay. Oh, oh, oh. La, 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 la. Elf guy, you need a ride, cabbie. Yeah, I know that. That's usually why people call a taxi. The door opens to me. Can she with this bizarre verbal take as usual? Getting damn cold out now. Ow. Hi, Elf. You start the engine. Pretty cold tonight, right? His voice has a peculiar lilt to it, as if certain syllables were sung to stop him from stuttering. Hey, are you you you're cold with your ass stuck to that car seat of yours? I'm fine. Yeah, we freeze our asses off. That's what I thought. You can't fool me. I know a cold guy when I see one, huh? I've got a place to stay in Passy. Anyway, you can give me a lift? Sure, of course. Great, great mate. That way we stay nice and warm. In the 15 years I've been on the street, it's never been this cold, I swear. You know, some guys aren't going to make it shit. That's how it goes. For us, yes. A pause. His smell is gradually permeating the inside. Of course it is. It doesn't bring back fond memories, but it doesn't bother you either. You'll leave the door open later on the air out of the cab. That's a really weird thing to note in this place when previous smells have been described to the T to be really unpleasant anyway but you know I'm used to it even before sure I don't even I don't think I ever told you when I was a kid I was never cold old never a weird uneasy break one time my mother dragged me to the Pyrenees during blah I didn't know what the hell to do with me like to think you know what I'm just gonna skip this I'm sorry but it's just this is not important <laughs> um How are you guys? How's your night going? <laughs> I will say, I still really like the artwork. And it does bring across its atmosphere really well. That's very consistent. And to be fair, I think this is probably a pretty good portrayal of, I can just go home. Sweet. <laughs> Oof. I'm surprised you're able to read out for so long. It wears me out in an instant. Yeah, I guess it's dedication. <laughs> I am feeling it in my throat. Um, I I had a um, my throat has been hurting all day anyway, but I am I am determined to get through this tonight because I don't really want to do another round of it. You know, I do want to see how it plays out, but I'm not into it enough to play it for another night. I'd rather start something else. You know. Um, so I don't think we learned anything else. You know what? It doesn't matter. Like, I don't need to look at any of this. And that's kind of annoying me about this. Um, oh, hello. Hi. Ice cold. So? She heaves a long sigh. There's no background noise. She must not be at the station. Where are you? I'm... For a second, you think she's going to tell you, but then... Somewhere. None of your business. A light clinking noise. The sound of a teacup on a coaster, maybe. I'm listening. What have you got for me? She clears her throat. Her voice sounds louder, more confident. You glance at the wall. The suspects are all lined up. All the evidence. A whole mess of your ideas. Your stomach is in a knot. So, it's not the homeless guy, because... All he ever talks about is his childhood, unless he's like totally Cocoa Puffs, and I don't... <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna exclude him. The cop was way too preoccupied with his personal life, understandably so. So I'm gonna sort him out as well, unless it's really bad writing from a psychological standpoint. The other guy, the ex-cop, I really haven't found out enough about, and he would probably be like routine enough, but... We have a lot of evidence against, um, what was her name, Claudia, uh, the woman, and um, 
you know, specifically on the third case, which is really on the nose, it might not be her because that points so strongly to her, but I'm gonna pick her if it lets me freely, you know, pick and just doesn't railroad me down what's most likely from the evidence I've collected. I'm gonna pick her because um, it seemed really weird to me that she just burst into tears. And maybe, yeah, maybe she's just that maladjusted from working night shifts and not ever getting any social time and being lonely. Not gonna, you know, put that beyond anything. But, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Like, the game sorted everything for me and the pieces of evidence I have that don't go anywhere don't really help with anyone. So, <sighs> I don't have to remind you, you cannot get this wrong. I have a meeting in two hours with the district attorney and the chief of police. Even the Minister of the Interior will be in a corner of the room somewhere. Well, I, then I guess you should have done your job, lady. Obviously, I'm thrilled, <laughs> but I certainly don't want to put that too much pressure on you. You could almost hear the smirk she must be wearing. You lay the receiver down on the table. Now, you have to decide. J'accuse. You pick the phone back up and explain your choice to Lieutenant Bussy. Why, how, the evidence, your sources. She listens without saying a word. When you finish talking, she remains silent for just a second too long. You sense she's not convinced. Listen, are you sure of what you're saying? Because between what you told me this morning and what you're saying now, I didn't tell you anything this morning. <laughs> we didn't talk this morning. Something's not right. You're sure this is the suspect you want to pursue? Yeah, sure. Okay then, I'll put my guise on it and find a way to make all this more presentable. You take a deep breath. She does the same. I'll call you tonight, try to get some sleep. She pauses. No way she's going to hang up on such a positive note. No, she's probably gonna... It might be your last night of freedom. She snickers and hangs up. Psychopath! You put the phone down. You might as well be standing in the ice-cold emptiness of outer space. You decide to go to bed, to sleep, best way to cable time. With a heavy hand, you wipe your tired face. You lie down on the open sofa bed. The events of the day run there, meh, the streets, meh, your brain's running, meh. You can tell you need, you can see your investigation board, you sigh when you think that in just a few hours it'll all be over, you'll have answers, Busset will have her arrest, Paris will be peaceful again, but what about you, what will you do? Just when you're about to fall asleep, you think you hear a voice in the distance. He's crying. You jump. Okay, whatever, hallucination again. You get the impression you aged five years in a matter of hours. You get up quickly. And a few minutes later, you're outside of your studio. Wait, so I have to drive again? <laughs> no. I thought I was done. Oh, you exit your place and see Busia leaning up against your cab. She waves at you to get in. You again, get in. A metallic taste creeps into your mouth. You wonder I had a deal. You nod painfully. The intel you gave me was total crap. Clearly, I should not have trusted you. Her voice suddenly sounds distant and rumbling. You're coming with me to the station. We're going to talk about what'll happen next. Like a storm, a tempest that destroys everything in its path. Everything. Believe me, that Ye is dying to meet you. What'll happen next? She'll drag you into the station. Blame you for everything. Everyone seems to believe anything she says. All the evidence she has is false. The next day, your face is on the cover of all the newspapers. Your name is on everyone's lips. You are the killer everyone has been waiting for. You're fucked. Fucked. All right, that's it. <laughs> what a great night. <laughs> Let's see if we can go back to, if I can just go through the decision board now. Or if I have to like, maybe it doesn't matter. Okay, okay, we're just gonna go through and see who it is. I don't care. It's just... Let's make it a game. Who should we pick next? 
Should we pick the gay cop? Do you think that's likely? Or is it the ex cop? So it could go two ways, right? Either it is actually one of them and it, then it, it, it won't have mattered what I collected intel wise, or I didn't get enough um, conclusive information on any of them. And it doesn't matter who I pick because none of them, because none of them, you know, I don't have anything definitive. All right, I'm gonna go with him next. Blah, 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 blah. Um, maybe I just don't get how this was supposed to work, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, 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 you sure, yes. Mm hmm. Paul is too old, but the 180 is right. Yeah, we had the, the also the thing with like one of the cases the killer was taller than 180. None of them are that tall. All of them aren't 180 tall. So that's why I thought maybe she was wearing heels in one of them, which doesn't make sense, but that, you know. Let's see. I hope it's not this one. Because that really... Yeah. Okay. It was wrong! So next is the ex-cop. Yeah, he's super small. None of them are tall enough. She's actually the tallest. I might have just played this game completely wrong, but I honestly don't know what I should have done differently. Flashes a smile. <laughs> this is such bullshit. <laughs> this is such complete and utter bullshit. I'm, I'm sorry, but like, what? Good news, you're right. Or at least the DA thinks your evidence is sufficient. No emotion in her voice. She's giving you the facts, nothing more. We're going to bring Fragonard in tonight. She nods. Her expression clouds over. I have trouble. She freezes. Fragonard is... Fragonard is a mentor. Mine and half the squads. You can't understand. He's an institution. He's... She stops, clears her throat. Uh, I need your help one last time. Later on tonight, we're going to get Fragonard to leave home and find a way to get him into your taxi. She pulled some kind of pen out of her pocket that she puts in the little cubby just above the car stereo. This is a bug. 
I held up my end of the deal. Our deal is just between you and me. I can always break it, you know? Go back to the DA, get you thrown in jail. She shakes her head. Listen. She takes a dramatic pause and doesn't really know where she's going. I've seen you and heard you enough to know that you have a trick. A gift for getting people to talk. I need someone I can trust to get close to Fragonard without making him suspicious. He's a cop. He knows how we work. No one's ever sent a taxi driver to make an arrest. I'm not sure about that. He won't put up a fight. I hope he'll open up to you. That he'll confess before things fall apart. Not too far from the hospital where he goes for his treatments. There's an alleyway under construction. There won't be any civilians, just us and him. She sighs. Two teens walk by the cab and the intense smell of weed fills the cab. Busset doesn't budge. I know you can do it. If you stick to the plan, nothing can go wrong. Understood. She gives you a typical smile, like an owner ad admiring her dog performing a perfect trick. I'm off. She lays her hand on the door handle. You pick the suspect up, drive to the meeting point, and you're free. Easy as pie. Well, so far, my dear, you haven't really been reliable in anything you've promised, so... I'll just take that. Shit, shit, shit. You hit the dashboard. Intense pain spreads through your hand. You get the keys in the ignition and turn. The motor comes on. Your night is about to begin. Your last night. Okay. Oh, that means I have to pick up more people before I can get pick him up? <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. Uh. It's a shame, because this is supposed to be like some cost fallacy in full of back effect. Yeah, it's just, it's even more dissatisfying if I stop like three minutes before the end. I don't care about any of this. <laughs> I'm not sure I understand. Well, you think I look like a couple of hands now. Nah, couple of acts, but they say we look like more mother. Mm hmm, say nothing. La 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 la. You have a younger lover. I don't care. Maybe she's abducting him. Oh no. I still don't get how it can't be the, the ex cop. I mean, I'm. Sure, you know, he's one of the two people who would have had access to the archives, and I'm glad it wasn't the younger cop, because again, that just didn't parse for me. So, sure, I'll take the money. <laughs> uh. Um... Okay, I have no idea what just happened. Um, there he is. Um, but I, I just didn't, I don't have the clues. Like, I have no idea how I actually convicted him. And also, how in, how in hell, how in the hell of everything that was satisfying to, um, to my favorite cop, right? Like, eh. Hey, thanks for your YouTube videos. I'm a big fan from Los Angeles. Hi, Motos88. Welcome. And thank you very much. How is LA? <laughs> it's been it's two years since I've been there. More than two years. God, that's depressing. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it. Oh, sorry. I should read this. He has a tired look about him. And not just because it's early. His voice drags. The usual place. Dude, I've only driven you once. San Luis Hospital, then. You start driving. Your passenger seems to have his mind elsewhere. Not entirely awake. Stubble on his chin. You scan his skin, his movements, his attitude, his... His eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the course for LA, isn't it? Um, it's cold as shit this morning. I forgot his voice, man. His voice makes you jump. You nod. You have more people or not as many when it's cold out like this? 
Folks tend to stay home when it's too cold. There might be more of them, but they make shorter trips. Makes sense. Dead silence. Talk about the weather. <laughs> it's worse in summertime, though. People don't take cabs as much, but when they do, they go further. Yeah, obviously. Is it? You drive in silence for a second, the world goes by. Oh yeah, no, it is obvious, I guess. You don't want to look in your side mirrors too often. You haven't seen a trace of the cops yet. Busset told you not to worry, but... By the way, you're coming in at the climax of a very... Not so... Not as exciting as it could have been game. You know, it's funny. Just this morning, I was thinking about an old case. One of my first cases, actually. It was just after the Mezrin case. You know who Mezrin is, don't you? Or am I really that old? <laughs> you sense it's the right time to get him to talk. Um, yes, yes. Public enemy number one. Public enemy number one. Exactly, public enemy number one. I joined the force a few months after his death, and everybody was still talking about it. Public opinion was very divided. Did the cops murder Mezrin, or was it self-defense? I know the answer. They shot him down like a dog. He looks straight at you. You can see the hint of an underground fire roaring deep in his eyes. Now, I most certainly do not want to die like a dog, understood? He catches his breath and is clearly shaken. He ever so slowly reaches into his pocket and pulls out his weapon. Where did Busset ask you to take me? Doesn't look like you'll be able to throw it on, huh? I like that one note in the song. <laughs> this is a good note. <laughs> yeah, it is a good note. Um, interesting. Okay, so... I could try to throw him off now and risk getting shot. <laughs> or I just... Be... Uh, excuse me? Don't take me for a fool. How does he know, though? Whatever. A, a warehouse. Some old garage. They're waiting for us there. An ambush. I'm no Mizrine, you know? I'm not going to pull a grenade out from under the back seat here. He cuts off with a groan. When you start speaking again, his voice is chilling. We see. You can see his finger on the trigger. It's shaking, ever so slightly. How much does she know? the pen you can smell our con, con, our con, con no, not conviction our you know what I mean <laughs> man it's too warm in here <sighs> how much does she know I don't know she doesn't have evidence but we'll just say she does she has evidence you hear a long sigh coming from the back seat a few seconds go by. You try to concentrate on driving, despite your sweaty hands and dripping brow. Okay, why hasn't she tried to arrest me then? You shrug. Don't know. She told me it would be easier this way. Uh, I think she hopes you'll turn yourself in without a fight. He looks away. You know, we say is really one of a kind, but she doesn't fit into today's world. That's an interesting statement. Probably not what I would have said about her. Neither do I, for that matter. The weapon he's holding is shaking slightly, wavering. You suddenly notice he's speaking to you in a more familiar tone. That's why I killed them. Bastards, all of them. Rapists, murderers, and liars who escape prosecution. Now, we see. The say would like to do the same thing I did. Slam a bullet into the head of the first murderer she could get her hands on. But she can't. You just can't do that anymore. Thank fuck. A long, painful, heavy sigh. 
In any case, now there's only one truth left. No more confrontation, no debate, no need for justice to be served. They were guilty, and I killed them. I can write that down if you want. It's no secret. I knew I'd be caught sooner or later. Either by Busset or by... A sentence hanging in the air. Is he gonna shoot himself? I'm sick. About cancer. Oh, he's jigsaw. All over. They hope some new drug might cure me. But what's the point, honestly? He abruptly accelerates his speaking pace. I don't want to go to jail. A cop can't go to jail. I don't want to see my face on the cover of magazines and newspapers. But I don't want to deny Bussy the pleasure of catching me, her and her team. So, here's what we're going to do. There's a place in Montmartre, a place I really love. It's my first memory of Paris. I must have been six or seven. My mother had come all the way from Martinique. She thought she could convince my father to... Yeah. Anyway, there's no point in telling that story. No point? Why? He looks away. There's no point because there's no moral to the story. My parents were selfish people. They preferred their own personal comfort to keeping me safe, to raising me right. Anyway. There's a bench up there, not far from Sacre Coeur. This bench has, has two clear advantages. First, it faces the city of Paris, southern facing. All the monuments are there, staring back in splendor. He starts to speak with confidence. I especially like it when all the buildings poke out above a cloud of pollution. Notre Dame Square Towers, Pompidou and its colored pipes, the Eiffel Tower. He shakes his head and his voice sounds deep and serious again. The second advantage to sitting on this bench is that you turn your back to Sacre Coeur, an ugly building. They only built it to rub the church the right way. He looks away and remains silent for a while. His hands shake a little. I went to see Paris one last time. It's a little too early to watch the sunrise, but at least there'll be people around. Lovers. Life. I just want to go and sit on the bench. Look out at Paris. Alone. For five minutes. And then you can go to the meeting point so Busset can pick me up. What do you say? Yeah, he's, he's gonna shoot himself. Okay, you turn around. You'll see, the view is incredible. Neither of you says a word for several minutes. You drive in silence. Then, as you're beginning the climb up to the top of Montmartre, the cop lowers his weapon. I want to apologize. I'm sorry I hurt you the night of the attack. Everything could have turned out so differently. You're nothing like the guy I took down, you know? He was a kid at the time, but there was something in his eye. Something bad. Something evil. His eyes sparkle for a bit. Tears, perhaps? Seconds later, you park a few meters away from Sacre Coeur. The bench is right over there. I just need five minutes. Five minutes, and we'll go. Got it. You nod. He wants to go to a spot that clearly has important step. Yeah, I mean, this is just, this is just what, you know. Like, I'm not sure how psychologically valid this is in any way, but it's definitely Hollywood writing. <laughs> Um, don't, don't do it. He lays his hand on the door handle and gives you a genuine smile. Do what? He 
He looks at your face for a while, shakes his head, and with emotion in his voice, says, Thanks, friend. He gets out of the cab. You watch the old cop. He takes a few steps towards the bench, walks around it like he wants to look at it from every angle. He doesn't so much as glance at Sacre Coeur and its dome, lit up with powerful spotlights. A few passers-by, chilled to the bone, are wondering about nonchalantly on the square in front. The cop finally sits on the bench. He stays there a long minute, contemplating Paris. Strings of light weave around traffic circles and intersections, making a magnificent canvas. There's a sudden movement. Yeah, all right. Oops. Thanks, friend. Those were his last words. Are you fucking kidding me? Nope. Lieutenant Bussy watches you. Her jaw is clenched. Locked, more like. <laughs> Looks like you missed this chin. <laughs> <clears throat> what else did he say? He confessed to his crimes. The why you put in the cab must have caught it all. You have the recording. Busset stares at you for a second before looking away. Shit! Shit! This is not how it was supposed to end! You're not clear on whether she's angry or sad. You let her collect her thoughts for a few minutes before. Did he... say anything about me? It's all on the recording. He said you were like him. Of course. That guy was my mentor. A father figure, actually. He taught me everything I know. That's why I slipped you his file. I couldn't investigate him. No one on the team wanted to either. Okay, what about the other three? Are they trying to like make her sympathetic to me now? It was unthinkable. Unfeasible. Fuck. A semblance of a smile spreads across her face. Awkward. Strained, perhaps. It makes your blood curdle. You're... You're free to go now. Don't leave the country, though. We might have some questions for you at some point. She opens the door. Icy air seeps in. You shiver. You came, really came through, you know? I didn't think you'd do so well. Gee, thanks, lady, right? Her voice breaks up a bit with her last words. No. She gets out of the cab and slams the door behind her. A blunt, metallic noise. Unidentifiable vibrations. The car quakes and shakes like a boat, and we never got to know what she smells like. A minute goes by before you can move again. You slowly come back to your senses. Key in the ignition, handbrake off, foot on the accelerator. You leave Sacre Coeur behind. All right, so technically there's two more acts to this game. She smells blood curdling, yeah, probably. But I'm not gonna play those on stream. I will have to like... Uh, she hired a fucking cab driver, yeah. And also like, I don't care that you're affected by this lady. You literally threatened me with framing me for a, uh, for being a serial killer. What the hell do you expect me to do but just oblige with the bare minimum of what you're asking me to do and then fuck off? Like, okay. Um, to be fair, that might just be the character. That's not a writing issue so far as the character is believable in that arrogance. So with her, I don't have the biggest issue. And I think that they came up with um, quite a lot of interesting... Yeah, this was just one case. This was just the starting case. And I think there's two more but we're not gonna play those on stream because um, they're probably gonna be longer. Um, and I'd be very surprised, it's possible, but I'd be very surprised if uh, the same writing issues wouldn't come up. Um, yeah. So I never wanna just shit on somebody's hard work in every game that you know comes out and 
is in some way cohesive is a lot of work for a lot of people who are all scrolling by right now. So there's a lot of stuff that I did like about this. The aesthetics are very much like on point. It's all very cohesive. It's, you know, the noir feel is there. Um, and I like the idea of it. Uh, oh. Um, sad dedication. Oh, we're not done yet. Okay, I'll read that in a second. Um, what bothered me was that after a while of playing it, there are certain patterns that emerge that kept breaking my suspense of, suspension of disbelief. And this is not a fantasy game, right? Like, it, it, it shouldn't have to work hard. But stuff that... Something that always bothers me is if I can tell from the writing that somebody is trying too hard to evoke things. And I can appreciate that they went for writing in a way that made me feel like I was in the moment. And using smells for that and sounds in general, like setting the scene, is exactly what you're supposed to do. But not in this way. <laughs> because it was way too on the nose. Right? You get a smell for every passenger. You get descriptions like he makes a noise like an air bubble bursting on the surface of a river, which is for one, way too wordy, and second of all, what? I don't know what that sound is, especially when you combine it with the verb yelp. And I, I pointed to that example yesterday already, because that really stuck in my mind, but that was one of several, right? Um, and this might not be as immersion breaking for others as it is for me. It's a burp. <laughs> yeah, but it was a yelp. And also, bubbles don't burp. <laughs> like, you know, at least this, the description of he yelps like a dog that just had somebody step on his tail. That's not very creative, but at least everybody knows what sound that is supposed to be, right? Um... If a game, if it's a game that centers on the writing, it stands out if it's not exceptional. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. And that may be unfair because uh, definitely the writing is better than in a lot of games. And um, it's not so much the writing of the general, whoop, just knocked my glasses off of my face from talking with my hands. I would say that's never happened to me before, but it definitely has. Um, You should link the clues by yourself like in Black Cat. I haven't played Black Cat, but that's definitely up. Black Cat? You mean Black Sad, right? I haven't played that yet. That pay way you pay more attention on how you get them and they stick more in your head. Exactly. And that was my mechanical issue. That really the thing that I was supposed to be doing, right? Besides the fact that obviously I was supposed to like meet these random stories. Um, Uh, which we already had a neocab, right? The, the idea of encountering random um, fates and interacting with them for a very brief period and then them stepping out of your reality again. All that is fine. All that is a cool idea. Um, but then the main point of this that added on to it was trying to solve a criminal case. And what I expected and what f formed a little I knew about the game, it had me expecting was that I would be able to, by strategically picking people, or by strategically, and this is all the more important, and something that Neocab did way better, by strategically picking the responses that I was going to give, that at the very least, it was going to make me feel like I was picking the right answers to get clues that I could then, in a second phase, like kind of Nancy drew together and put into a network of, oh, this could, mm, and this makes me think it's this guy. Instead, I got a random assortment of clues, half of which didn't fit with anybody, and the other half of which the board automatically assigned to people, and again, half of that, weren't obvious to me as to why they fit a person. Like two of them were just, just assigned to a person because it said, oh, homeless person, poor. Homeless person likely to steal wallet. Um, not enough investigation, too much smelling, basically. That's what it comes down to. And so I don't think the stuff that bothered me would have bothered me as much if it hadn't been interconnecting so much, right? Like focusing on the writing, but the writing being not that stellar. 
and at the same time, you know, making that really be the main focus point instead of actually having me do a detective game, like, I don't know, like an L.A. Noir thing, right? And obviously it shouldn't have been that scale, because that's a AAA title. But, uh, you know, I didn't do anything, right? All I did was pick random faces on my map and pick random faces that had a glowing frame around them every time one of them showed up. And then also sometimes click on eyes because I learned that that's where it's probably I gained valuable information, but even that didn't happen every time. And by the end of it, what I did was guess my way through my subjects, through my uh, suspects, because the one that I had the most evidence on, most of which was relating to one case, wasn't it, right? So the little bit of deduction I could do didn't lead anywhere. And then I had two additional people who were the same amount of likely to be it because both of them had access to the records that nobody else had rec uh, access to because both of them were cops. And there I just had to pick randomly because I had nothing to go off of. <laughs> and I could have picked up the guy once where I didn't, and maybe that would have given me the final inclination but the only time I talked to him, he told me about some robbery that was decades ago, right? It was a visual novel all along. We've been had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that was the other thing. So if you're going to make me feel railroaded on your evidence board, which first and foremost is the biggest mistake about this, don't make me feel railroaded in the conversations. And that happened several times. Especially not when on every, on every um, dialogue, you give me the option to just not say anything, right? Do the enemy dot dot dot. And then when I end up picking it, sometimes or more often than should have been, have me encounter a situation where clearly the script was expecting me to pick one of the verbal answers, like the actual answers. That's bad. Uh, so, yeah, I, 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 I appreciate what it would set out to do. I like the aesthetics, um, both the literal aesthetics, music, and the overall feel, um, but I don't think it succeeds at what it tries to do for me. Am I the serial killer then? Yeah, well, uh, you were lucky. <laughs> you are lucky. We just caught the guy right? So you're lucky. You were here last, but we already beat the game. <laughs> you drove all night long with your window open. You're so tired, your chest is tight and your eyes are heavy. Just sleep, man. You have 300 bucks. Not now. You're going to run out of gas soon. The light went on about 20 kilometers back. You're somewhere in Normandy. You pull over onto the shoulder and get out. There's almost no traffic. You step over the guardrails. Your eyes adjust to the color of a break of dawn. The sun will soon rise over the horizon. Like, this is beautiful. Like, down to the light camera. But, um, bye, have a good night. Thanks for, thanks for checking in. Uh, you have luck in your name. Yeah. At least the game should give the player some clues to pick the next customer. Yeah, and if you screw the answers, you should have a second chance to talk to the same person. Now that I don't agree with. I'm completely fine with messing up a conversation. Um, ideally with being able to pick up the same person somewhere along the line. If you want to like try to get more information out of them or something. Um, so I'm fine with no do-overs. The problem here was I didn't need do-overs because the vast majority of the conversations I had were absolutely pointless. and. It almost seemed like it randomly assigned when a passenger was going to talk about the serial killer because it gave me this like cookie cutter uh, part of, of dialogue in there where it wasn't even me talking to the person. It was just description text telling me, oh, this person wants to talk about the serial killer uh, and they have something to say. So you store the information. Then it gave me the little icon that said, oh, new clues. And then I got to talk about pointless things with them, right? So not even at that point did I have to make the right decisions to get the clues that weren't going to lead me anywhere. 
But not even at that point did the game go out of its way to give me the feeling that I was actually involved in any part of this investigation. The game that I played was talking to random Parisians while I was watching a movie about a taxi driver who is forced to investigate a case without showing me how exactly that ends up happening. But that was not the game I played. But it was the game that I was sold. So that I find really bad because it's a disconnect. Maybe if you picked up the cat, it wouldn't have saved. It wouldn't have saved the. It would have saved the game, <laughs> probably. <laughs> that was Black Sad in his real life form. <laughs> you should have to be able to find clues from different customers. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure that would make everything more complicated and stuff. But that was the game I expected, right? To be able to miss out on some clues. Again, I also would have been fine, and maybe this is the case, and I'm just really missing it by how it's presented to me. I'm also fine with a scenario where there is a perfect way to play this night, th these few nights, right? You just have to pick up the right people. Uh, because only a few people will be able to give you the clues. Or, you have to be smart about it and go to gas stations intentionally to talk to the clerks. Or you get information about, you know, that you have those eye symbols and you don't, you don't really know what you're driving towards. You just know that's probably an informant of some sort. And so you drive there and then something happens. It doesn't tell you at all where that is, what it is, what you're trying to find there. That's all just told to you once you get there. So the control for how the, the crime case part of this game goes is completely out of your hands. And uh, yeah, exactly. Especially in a taxi game where, and we had a, a in, in, in most cases, we had a much bigger choice uh, of people to pick from for who we could pick up, right? Than in Neocab, where also already it was plenty. But here, until I got disappointed, it gave me the feeling of, oh, I really need to get lucky here, or respectively, it must be that I will be able to get some sort of information from several of these people. Uh, and then, but if I do that, then you have to have another part of the game, like with the eyes, where you actually do get pointed information. So, but none of that mattered. <laughs> none of that mattered. Because I could have still, at the end of the game, gone through the list of my suspects and gotten the right one. When it should have been, if you don't have enough evidence, you cannot solve the case. With how the game worked, that still would have sucked, because I still would have lacked the, completely the feeling of I had any control over this, but ideally, I should have been in a place where there is a way for me to have a palpable, transparent impact and directive to decide or to getting the clues and getting the reward of, oh, I actually have enough clues to have a valid suspicion that then I can present to the cop who can then decide, oh yeah, this is enough. Or, no, this is not enough to give a complete picture. To then send me back like to night three where it says, try again from here, you were good up until here. And feeling like because of this clue I should pick up this person next. Exactly. Exactly that. I need to go to bed now. Last night was pretty short. Okay, have a good night. And uh, get well. Player's choice is a little sick, everybody. So let's wish him a let's wish him a quick recovery. Okay, let's let's finish this game. Hey, hey, I wanted to. You catch your breath. When Aid told me, oh, this is our ex-wife. She'd held onto your phone. Uh, just yeah, but I thought it was stupid, but now the sun is slowly rising and its colors are flooding the landscape. Bare underbrush, a tiny village lost in fog up in the distance, a hilltop sparkling with dew. The view seems alien to you. I wanted to thank you for giving me the opportunity to redeem myself. Thanks. Oh, this is us speaking. That word disgusts you, but it's too late. 
thanks to, you know, I did something important. I mean, I think. Who knows? Silence, your head is spinning. You haven't spoken to your brother in years. Well, in a manner of speaking, you grin. Oh! Oh, this is our brother! Who is now being called by the ca No. Oh, I don't get it at all. Something's happening in my kitchen. They grow up so fast. Age shows me pictures sometimes, but I never go inside the house. It would be too complicated for everyone, but they're doing well. They look a lot like Dad, at least I think. You pause. A truck flies by, just muted. I, I have no idea what's going on here. I thought Aid was our ex-wife. And we killed our brother? I thought when it was all over, I mean, I thought I'd be able to get some decent sleep. I close my eyes and sleep. Really sleep, finally. But sleeping is just a break. It doesn't put an end to it. It all starts... My voice cuts you off. You have re reached the maximum time limit. Please, you hang up. The phone feels heavy in your hand. What should you do now? There's a broken fence in front of you, leading to a small footpath into the woods. Behind you is a highway leading to the sea. Get back in the car. It's Mish! Mish! That makes me laugh every time. <laughs> Welcome back, Mesh. We finished the game and we're all confused. You sigh and retrace your steps. On the other side of the guardrail, you find your overheated cab. The next gas station can't be much further. You slowly turn the key in the ignition. There's gotta be something for you out there. Okay. <laughs> so, Mesh, you turned in, uh, not exactly the right time because you you missed my entire tirade about this game but i remember you saying at some point that you played this game and you then noticed that you what was that you mean this Mish. that's your name <laughs> Mish. <laughs> That's why I say it like that. And I finally patched in the clip. Um, anyway, you said at some point, I think, if I remember this correctly, that you'd played this game. <laughs> and uh, you you didn't fully get how your... how the clues worked. Or that you get, didn't get it until a certain point or something. And we kind of encountered the same thing here. Um, and I just kind of went off on a tangent about how um, the clues really aren't something you work with. It's just something that seems like you collect almost on accident. And then the game is like, oh yeah, this is a clue that leads to this person. And this is a clue that leads to that person. And that's it. And like, you're not part of that process. You just drive around and talk to people. And then sometimes you have a little scrap on your wall. And that then connects to people. And then at the end, you play a guessing game. And if you're lucky, you get the right perp. So do you maybe have any insights to share about how the clue system actually works that just didn't reveal itself to me on the first, uh, the first chapter? You even managed to leave before it saved and played the last day again. Oh, well for us here, it just let me reload right before I made the decision which killer it was, which suspect was the killer. So I just went through and I got it on the, on the third try. Without that, I would have just quit there, to be honest. Because <laughs> I had no clues leading me to that killer. It was just, it was two clues. And none of them were in any way, um, Conclusive. You had like one person that could have done it. Mm hmm.
I need to open a window. <laughs> Right. So what happened for, for me, and I'm pretty sure the first part of this is scripted, one of the suspects got excluded after like three nights. Uh, that was yesterday, I think you were here for this. Which is nice, but you know, cool. That wasn't in my control either. Um, and then I had a bunch of clues for one person, but she didn't do it. <laughs> Old gun, the person was a cop, and he didn't like how the police works. Yeah, so... That was... Yeah, so... Oh, so, so it was this case, then. A hey, bonkers, gotta go. Alright. Bye. Thanks for checking in. Um... Yeah, so we had the old gun, but that doesn't really... Sure, ex-cop, whatever. Um... And then we had the ex-cop, obviously. Uh, I don't think we had the clue of, like, he doesn't like how the police works now. That was inferred, but it wasn't a clue that I had on the board. And then we had that the person uh, who did the first three murders had to have access to police files because those weren't leaked. So it was either him or the other cop, like the active cop. But none of it was, like, enough to make me go, oh, it's definitely him. Because he was also the smallest person, and we got the information that uh, for one of the crimes, the person was taller than uh, a meter 80, and none of them were that tall. But all of them were smaller than 180, and that was the only other clue we had for the th previous three crimes. I, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Did you play the whole game, or did you just play the first case? Yeah. Well. The first case and I thought that was enough. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of how I feel. I will personally have to unfortunately go back and do at least a bit more to get some achievements, but I'm not going to do that on stream because I'm definitely not going to go read anything out. The upside is, which is a downside for the quality of the game, but an upside for me as a comp completionist, the upside is that I won't have to read anything because it doesn't matter what I click, apparently. Like, it just doesn't matter. I just get to click my way through and at the end, I can just guess. Blasted achievements. Yeah, right? <laughs> Forcing you to play again. I know, it's like a job sometimes. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, unfortunately underwhelmed. I always feel, I feel a bit slightly uncomfortable, a little bit like a bully to like, just tear a game down on stream. Because, again, like, somebody sweat over this and put a lot of love into this. And, like I said, it's not like it's the worst thing I've ever played. It definitely isn't. But it's really disappointing from what it makes you, it has you expecting. And it could be so much more, right? But, you know, like they say, you never date potential, so you shouldn't play potential either. It's not bad, but it's not. It's not good. It's not good at pulling off what it promises. And that's always a problem. So that's my conclusion for this game. Uh, don't regret playing it, though. Um, and, uh, again, love the aesthetics. The look of this menu alone is chef's kiss. Uh, that's what I felt, too. Beginning of the game was interesting, but I didn't like how you investigate and stuff. Yeah. And it really draws out. Like, it's, it's, it's really, like, it should ramp up near the end, right? At the very least, you should get to pick up one of your killers, or one of your suspects, during the last night on every shift or something, or I don't know what, but it, it, the tension needs to rise before the last encounter with the killer when you already know it's him. And that was kind of well done, and the music was good, and sure, but it's not enough. 
Uh, it's never fun to not feel satisfied by something you've put a lot of time into. Yeah, that as well. But, you know, it's not just sunk cost, right? Um, it's also like... Like, I remember reading a thriller at some point, and uh, I, I really like reading thrillers. Back then, I'd say I was even like, that was the high point of me discovering thrillers as my new go-to, like, oh, I like this genre. And it was like highly lauded, it came highly recommended, it had like super good reviews and stuff as being super scary and ooh. And similar to this with like the smells and the weird descriptions and stuff, after reading like, I don't know, the first 30 pages, and that's really, that's barely anything, there were patterns that started to emerge that just made me roll my eyes every time. And I could have stopped reading it, right? But, first of all, I want to give everything a fair chance. And second of all, I guess it is partly sunk cost. But also, it's a game. Its job is to be entertaining in the way that it frames for me. And what it frames in the first night just is not at all what it delivers. And that's a shame. Regardless of how much time I spent with it. It's just a mechanical disappointment. And if it wasn't, I'd be fine with the slightly above average writing. Want to know what happened in my ending? Uh, sure. Go ahead. What do you want to stream next? That's a good question. I have a few things on the list. Um, I usually go with whatever I feel like the night when I decide to, to do a new game. But let me quickly look at my list. Uh, I do have Black Sad on the list. Uh, not sure I want to start with that right next up, but that could be an option. I've also heard that the writing of Oxenfree is really, really good, so I might do that next. Uh, I found the killer and he knew that I was planning to take him somewhere so the police catches him. He said he gives me like five minutes, I want to go to this place. I knew he was going to kill himself. He said, I don't know if I want to do it, but he did it anyway. Yeah, that is it. that's exactly what happened uh, in our ending. I, I think it's a fixed ending. I don't think there's anything that changes regardless of what you say. And that's how I felt a lot about a lot of the places. That's how I felt about a lot of dialogue options. Oh, are we done? Okay, ambulance is done. Um, that's how I felt about a lot of dialogue options, um, that it, and it, that it made me feel like something was going to happen, but, you know, it didn't change a thing. Um, to be fair, that is a general weakness or thing about choose your own adventure games, right? The illusion of choice. But the point of it is, uh, is to pull it off in a way that still makes you feel like you have a choice, even if you are aware that that's not actually how these kinds of games usually work for a lot of their options. At least not for the ones that are increment incremental for the plot, usually, right? Fabena, moin Katja, wie geht's? Ich komme von dem Kanal Deutsch für euch. Yeah, nice. Hi. We're just about to wrap up the stream. So you're joining in a bit late. I've been streaming for three hours now. But thank you so much uh, for checking in. Do feel free to follow Quabena so you don't miss the future streams. You can maybe watch a bit sooner. Um, but either way, I'm glad you found your way over here from Deutsch für euch. It's always very nice. We've had like three other, three other people who, uh, who've checked in tonight. Um, you already doing that? Really? Oh, well, your follow didn't pop up. Uh, I've mentioned it before, but Missing Ocean might be the best game for that I've seen. I usually felt like the choices are too see-through. Okay, interesting. I do remember you mentioning Method of Mythic Ocean. I did get it, and I did put it on the list. It's still very much in there. I haven't forgotten about it. Oh, you followed when you were offline, when I was offline. So it was a while back. Well then, thank you. Uh, uh, what do you say? I'm not here. 
So, uh, happy late thank you. No, not happy late thank you for following. Quabena, thank you. Um, in Georgia last week, I ordered a pizza. And when I paid, she said, Danke, I was surprised. I asked her, are you German or Austrian? She was happy and started talking. I told her I had just no basic stuff. <laughs> nice. Okay. Man, I, I don't want to quit now because everyone's so talkative. Glitch hikers. It's free in just like half an hour or something. Oh, interesting. Anyway, guys, uh, it's been three hours. Thank you so much for joining me on this humid as balls night um, and playing through this uh, game that is playing on a rainy but really cold night. And uh, <laughs> sticking with me through my through my thoughts because it's always nice to get get this out. I might stream tomorrow. Or some other time this week, again, uh, I will announce it on my Discord if you're not on there yet and you want to get announcements before I actually go online. You can find the link in my About section. Uh, not much goes on there usually, although of course everybody's free to enact, whatever. But usually I just post announcement on there a few hours before stream. So if you want to catch that early, since I do stream pretty spontaneously most nights, uh, do feel free to join the Discord and say hi. Uh, and um, either way, thank you everyone for joining us. And uh, I'll see you next time. And uh, that's it. Playing windows closed for us? Okay, well. Good night everyone. Tschüss. <laughs>